Hello again, this is Brandon Joffe with Inspired Resolutions. Um, I wanted to talk about a, a concept that is really important and I, I don't know that it is something that often comes up in the parenting group that I run, but last night this concept um, came up, I, I think for the first time. And that's the idea of what do I do if my child is experiencing shame? And this particular parent meant shame regarding the mental health diagnosis. But then the conversation kind of went into more than just being ashamed of a diagnosis. What do I do if I'm a parent and I've got a child who's ashamed of their past behavior or mistakes that they made, or ashamed of their body or some sort of physical issue that they have, ashamed of a uh, medical issue that they might have? The concept of shame is, is such a difficult one because to overcome shame, um, we, we can't give that gift to anybody. If I could truly just give the gift of overcoming shame to anybody, I would be uh, the most famous therapist in the world. Um, but the question was, what can I do? If I'm a parent and I know that one of the things getting in the way of my child uh, growing or overcoming their issues is the shame that they have regarding those issues. And, and that just kind of got me to thinking and that turned into a really interesting conversation. And we came up with a few ways to help your child, that parents can help their child if their child um, is experiencing this shame that we're talking about. And the first, I think, really important question for parents to ask themselves is, am I contributing to that shame? And I don't think that there's many parents out there who purposely contribute to shame. Uh, to shaming their child even further when their child's feeling shame. Um, I think that uh, parents sometimes, though, end up shaming their child unintentionally. Their intentions are good. They're trying to get their child to grow or do something to overcome the ailment or the issue that they have. And it might come out in, hey, why don't you do this? How come you, how many times do I have to tell you that you should? Um, and, and so those you shoulds and why didn't you and, um, you know, how, and then sometimes parents will even get frustrated. You know, if you would just do this, you would, and you are, they might even go as far as say, hey, you know, you are being so lazy and um, calling them names, not, not those vicious names, but sometimes parents will result to desperation in trying to help their child and what they don't realize is that they're actually shaming their child right if it was as easy as just changing something to overcome a mental health disorder or um, choosing not to feel the way that they feel or just turning on the motivation switch then most teens would actually um, do that. They'd turn that switch. They they would get themselves to do that thing that would overcome it. And so sometimes, unintentionally, we shame our kids by nagging them or um, overparenting them or getting frustrated or angry with them. And I'm not saying you can't get frustrated and angry, but you got to think of the balance. You've got to think about um, what you've tried before and and is your chi is what your you're saying to your child, is it, go is it going to result in shame or is it actually going to result in them um, doing something, uh, you know, listening to what your advice is? I think one of the difficult things is um, when kids are struggling and maybe they don't have a mental health disorder, but they are defiant or have made mistakes and they're not doing their homework or they're choosing to use drugs or whatever it might be. What happens is um, parenting that becomes more important than the relationship. And it, it's important for parents to remember, you don't shame your child ever. It's not, you don't shame them unless they deserve it. It's you don't shame them. Find a way to communicate their failings or their um, mistakes and, and your find a way to parent them that isn't shaming. And that's a hard balance, I understand. And sometimes they're gonna come at you and say, well, oh my, you, you know, act like you're shaming them when you're not, you're having a difficult conversation with them. And so sometimes you can't take your cue about shame from them. 
but it's an important, I think that it's important that we keep that in mind, that we are making an effort to not shame while we're trying to parent them. Um, the second thing that parents can do is ask yourself, what resources have I offered my child? If your child has a mental health issue or maybe a motivational issue or a drug issue, um, first, you get with your partner and figure out well, what resources are we willing to offer and then in a healthy, calm communication, express to your child, hey, here's what we're willing to offer. Here's how we're willing to help you. And so if your child feels shame, it might be that they can't overcome that shame without therapy. It might be that, um, I don't know, that helping them um, get tutoring or a specialist to overcome uh, some sort of learning disability might be a resource that can help them overcome shame. It might be, um, you know, providing the resource of getting them involved in some sort of group or a sport or an activity that helps them overcome some sort of self-esteem issue. But sit down and if you need to ask a professional um, what kind of resources you can offer, do that. But sit down and think about the resources that not, not only are you um, able to offer, but what resources are you willing to offer? And when you offer kids resources, you got to remember that at first they might not take it. So don't just think about what are you willing to offer, but how long are you willing to offer that resource? Don't ever jam it down their throats. You got to make sure that you're offering the resources in a good spirit and you know that, hey, they're teens. They're gonna, they might not take it today. They might not um, accept your help of resources for, for a long time. But when you put it on the table, when you lay it out for them, you say, hey, this is here when you're willing to take it and willing to, to participate, then what happens is um, they're, they're, most like, they're likely to have an aha moment down the road, right? They know that you're safe to ask for this resource from. So um, the first thing that you can do for, for your teen who is ashamed is you can check yourself and not contribute to the shame. The second thing that you can do is offer them resources to get help, okay? They may not take that help, but you can offer the resources. The third thing that you can do is ask yourself, what advice do I have to offer? You're a parent, you've got some wisdom, you have experiences, you have knowledge that they don't have. And it's important that you, you give that knowledge and that advice to them, but there's an important rule. You don't want to give it so often that it becomes benign, that it becomes something that is not influential in their lives. So the rule that I tr encourage parents to follow is you give your message or your advice once, maybe twice, if you miscommunicated or they didn't understand what your advice was. But by the third time that you're saying it over and over again, it's probably insanity. And you don't want to continue to push your advice on them. Sometimes you got to give it plant the seeds and know that, hey, you know what, down the road, this is going to soak in. And it, it might not be helpful today, but this advice I just gave could be helpful down the road, especially if I don't ruin the relationship and force my will down their throat. Um, the fourth way that you can help your child who's experiencing shame is um, take care of yourself. Don't follow them into misery. Make sure that you are a, a rock, so to speak, in their life. A lot of times parents will um, beg their child not to feel what they're feeling and try to fix their child and, and tell their child's okay, they're not okay. And instead I would recommend that, hey, you know what, you give the advice, you give the resources, and then you make sure that you aren't um, participating and contributing to the shame, and then let go. Take care of yourself. Make sure that you're okay, because if you are an example of happiness in their life, and you are a role model for what to do to be happy, then what happens is um, they're more likely to follow you, right? But if you follow them down that kind of like misery rabbit hole, it's 
now we've got two people who are miserable and maybe feeling shame and guilt and stuck in that just trap of yuck and muck. Um, so oddly enough, after you've given resources, after you've checked yourself, you've got to start taking care of yourself and make sure that you're okay. And some parents that I've worked with that, that are just phenomenal parents, what happens is they feel guilty. Unless they fix their child, they can't let go. And sometimes you got to remember, your journey is not their journey. You're walking alongside your child in their journey, but your journey isn't their journey, and you can only do so much to help fix them. The rest is on them. There's one last thing that you can do to help your child with shame, and that's love on them unconditionally. Sometimes it's difficult to love a child who feels shame or guilt or is depressed and, and struggling. But when you love on your child unconditionally, and that might be, um, you know, not flipping out. And, and it might be that while they've got a bad attitude, you're able to have a loving and graceful and maybe forgiving spirit towards them. It might be cooking them their, their favorite breakfast. It might just mean saying, I love you. It might be sitting alongside them, listening to them without giving them the advice that you're always trying to give them. Just listening and saying, hey, you're not crazy. I don't know always. I don't always know how to tell people how to love on your child. But I know that if you've got a child who's feeling ashamed of a diagnosis that they received or a medical issue or a physical ailment or um, something else, a mistake that they made, it's going to be really important that you love on them even when you don't feel they deserve it. Now, notice that I'm saying love on them. I'm not saying love them. I'm saying love on them because that is tangible. That's something that, that we can sink our teeth into, so to speak. Okay? So, um, you know, to close out and, and reemphasize the first thing, if, if you are asking yourself, if you're a parent who's asking themselves, what do I do if my child is feeling shame, um, is ashamed of who they are or uh, what they are or what they've been diagnosed with or something else, first, make sure you're not contributing to the shame. Second, offer resources. Offer help. Let them know how you're willing to to um, contribute to them getting their own help. Three, give them advice, but not to insanity. Four, do not follow them into misery. Take care of yourself and make sure that you are a happy role model in their life. And five, love on them unconditionally.